Gracie Trotter made history in the Arca Menards West Series. We'll tell you all about her race weekend. Esme Hockey in the Porsche Carrera Cup is marching towards the championship race. And TCR Europe racing in Monza. All that and more on Grid Girl. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Grid Girls, the weekly recap where we have a program dedicated to reporting on all the women racing for the win. Joe from the Grid Network, as well as Daniel from Racer, the girls behind the helmet. We have a big weekend of racing from all around the globe. We'll start with Esme Hockey Weekend at Silverstone. Uh, yes, uh, uh, hello everyone and good morning. Uh, if you're stateside, good evening if you're uh, in Europe like, like us. Uh, you're right, Esme Hockey has been uh, having a stellar season so far in the British uh, Porsche Carrera Cup. Uh, it's uh, as, a series that she knows very well. Uh, she was racing there uh, even last year. She combined the W Series season with the Porsche Carrera Cup season and also the year before. Uh, Esme, unfortunately, had a mixed uh, season in the W Series. She was uh, obviously selected at the start of the season for... Um, the top uh, 18 uh, female racing drivers that competed in the all uh, women uh, formula 3 championship in the inaugural season uh, she was uh, okay mid season and then she had a very good uh, end of the of the year in her home racetrack which is Brands Hatch she is from originally from Kent which is the region uh, where Brands Hatch is located uh, Esme had a very um, important qualifying session she was third um, but unfortunately she could not uh, convert that result into a a, a race uh, podium uh, because she started on the grid and then uh, she fell back a little bit back and she could not finish in the top 12 uh, at the end of the season on point standing so she was not confirmed for the year that wasn't basically the 2020 in in w series but she came back in the porsche carrera cup Last year she was uh, third and she, she basically fought for the championship until the very end of the season while um, competing in, in both single-seater championship and in, in a GT championship championship she said that uh, uh, it, it was a little bit of a, of a challenge for her to switch from one car to another and uh, ultimately she could not finish uh, um, on, on a championship with a title in, uh, in the Porsche Carrera Cup but she, with, with no um, W Series or any Formula car commitments this, this year uh, she was back in the Porsche uh, Carrera Cup which is the fastest one make series around Europe um, she's competing in the pro-am category, um, like, like last year, and this this season basically she's having the perfect uh, the perfect campaign. She has been winning ra nine races so far, and uh, she has been uh, claiming eleven podiums. Uh, three uh, rounds are still to go in the uh, Porsche Carrera Cup um, UK Championship, and she really is in a good position for for winning the championship. Um, she's currently at 112 points ahead of Ryan Ratcliffe, which is at 106. Uh, last weekend she competed in Silverstone and she again won a double, she, had, she claimed a double race victory in Silverstone. It was not the Formula One track, but it was the national track, which is a little bit shorter. Uh, still, she, she could do very, very well. Uh, last year, uh, Silverstone was not a very good weekend for her. Uh, this year, she managed to to really to master the uh, the Silverstone racetrack, and uh, with a podium and a double victory, uh, again she is on really on uh, on path to to win the championship. Um, I think Esme uh, really is someone that uh, has found her uh, um, her best uh, best car in the Porsche Carrera Cup because uh, the, the Porsche car is really. A tough uh, car to drive and it's something a little bit different from other gt cars from what some of the drivers told us uh so she's really at home in the in the porsche uh, uh, car and she's doing absolutely fantastic this year very fantastic here i know she's up and coming and those cars are tricky to handle as you mentioned very exciting stuff we'll definitely be following more especially her championship campaign now, another set of cars that is really ha hard to handle is in the United States, the short track. Gracie Trotter made history in the ARCA West Series. The 19-year-old went to Las Vegas Motor Speedway, the Bullring, 
The bullring is a short track, very common in the United States. A lot of beating and banging, dealing with lap traffic. And Gracie Trotter became the first woman to win an ARCA sanctioned race in the ARCA series this past weekend. She described her car as the perfect setup. The car was just set up perfectly for her. Now, even though a good setup car does help you get to the wit, still, it takes a lot of handling with the car, making sure the handling stays there. Throttle control. You don't want to overspin the tires. You could lose grip. And then dealing with lap traffic. She held off a good pack to earn her first win in the ARCA series. A few weeks ago, she won a NASCAR late model race at Hickory Motor Speedway. So Gracie's definitely having a really great year. This season in the ARCA West series, eight starts, eight top tens, six top fives, one win. She has an average finish of 4.1. Really impressive stats. Now a little bit more about Gracie. She is part of the Toyota Driver Development Program and NASCAR's Drive for Diversity. For many wonder what is her potential path to the NASCAR Cup Series. Definitely right now she is in the ARCA West Series. So a lot of races in the West Coast. The ARC Menard Series, that could always be a good stepping stone. That's a great state for a lot of drivers to go there and experience, especially the super speedways of Daytona and Talladega. Of course, we also have the NASCAR Truck Series. They do the super speedways as well. And more NASCAR tracks, some short tracks here and there across the United States. Then, of course, Xfinity, which pretty much mirrors the Cup Series schedule, but it has a little less horsepower compared to the NASCAR Cup Series. Definitely encourage everyone, as we talk about all the drivers, you'll see their Twitter or Instagram handle on their profile picture right there. We encourage everyone to follow all the drivers we talked about, especially the next two drivers we're going to be discussing from Monza, Jessica, and Michelle. Absolutely. Uh, I was there um, in, uh, in Monza last weekend and uh, of course Jessica Bachmann and Michelle Halder were racing in the uh, TCR Europe, which is, uh, as we said a couple of weeks ago, uh, it's the top TCR championship uh, on, uh, on continental level in Europe. Of course, uh, the best drivers advance to the WTCR, which is the World Touring Car Championship. Um, and the, the drivers and the teams that are competing currently in the European Championship are the best of the best uh, of the national uh, trophies and the national championships that are racing all around Europe. Uh, Jessica is a young Swedish driver who has been competing in the championship, the TCR Europe, uh, since last year. Last year she made her debut in the European Series and she was the first woman to claim a podium in the series at Hockenheim last year. Uh, and uh, Michelle uh, was set to race in the German uh, Touring TCR Championship uh, even this year, while last year she claimed her first victory in the championship and made history as well. And uh, well, g uh, guess what? In uh, in, Z in Z Zandvoort, sorry, uh, two years, two weeks ago, she won the, the race, and she was the first woman to to win a race in the TCR Europe. Um, so she came back to, to Monza for the third round and uh, we all uh, were really looking forward to see what she could do in, uh, in a different track like, uh, like Monza. Um, Jessica was uh, racing in Monza last year and I was there as well to, to see her races. Uh, she was not that good last year, but um, with all the uh, the new cars and uh, you know some some different drivers and different teams, uh, we were really looking forward to see what she could do this year in Monza, and she was uh, really better actually. Uh, the first uh, practice session in Monza on Friday uh, was a very wet one. Uh, you know, when you are uh, going to to Italy, you're expecting to to see sun and the warm uh, weather. Actually, it was very rainy and not very cold, not very hot at all. Um, quite chilly, actually. Uh, and in the first practice session, they could not run very, very lap a lot of, of laps. Uh, both, uh, both the drivers, actually, the, the whole field. Um, so it, it was Michelle was sixth, uh, but it was actually she could do a couple of laps in the dry before the the heavy rain came down. So it was not a really uh, in, important result, uh, so to speak. The second uh, practice session, finally, it was uh, contested on dry conditions. 
uh, and both drivers were around the top 10, which is uh, really what they, uh, what they are targeting for this season. Uh, Jessica is racing for an important team, which is the uh, official uh, Hyundai team, uh, which is target competition, an Italian team, while Michelle is racing for her uh, smaller, uh, but yet very competitive uh, Halder team, a Proficar Halder team, which is a family run team, uh, together with her brother, Mike. Uh, Mike won the first race in, uh, in Le Castellet, and uh, as we said, Michelle won the second race in Zolder. So uh, it's a very com competitive team, despite its uh, small, uh, smaller dimension compared to other uh, squads that are racing in the TCR Europe Championship. And um, in qualifying, Jessica was really not happy about her performance. Uh, she had she was held up by traffic. Uh, she said uh, that she found the drivers that were uh, overtaking her in the final corners, where she was uh, trying to find some space uh, to uh, for her f uh, flying lap. And as we say, as we always know, uh, Monza is very tricky in uh, in qualifying because uh, you're always looking for a slipstream. Uh, so it, it can also it can be a, a huge difference if you are having some fast cars in front of you, but not too close to you. You know, it's very tricky, Monza. And uh, Michelle also was looking for slipstreams. Uh, she tried with her brother, uh, Mike. Um, ultimately, she she was a little better, uh, always around in, in, in P14, and Jessica was P13. Uh, so very close, they were both starting from the seventh row of the grid. Um, but Jessica was really not happy with it because she was looking for a Q2 to enter the Q2. Uh, TCR um, Europe has a format in qualifying which the top 12 drivers uh, go into Q2, like Formula One. Uh, and in the top 10 drivers of the Q2, uh, start the second race from reverse grid order. So it's very important to get into Q2 to have a good race starting position for the second race of the weekend. And that's why uh, Jessica was very disappointed by her P13, which is just one place um, off the, the Q2. Uh, in uh, well, actually, we can uh, hear them uh, speak because uh, we've been recording some audio with uh, both Jessica and Michelle, and uh, I would maybe start with uh, with Michelle uh, rounding up her uh, both her races. Okay, yeah, FP one it was uh, a little bit crazy <laughs> because yeah, we go out and was try, and I only took one lab in in the try, and afterwards it was uh, falling rain. But yeah, the first time here, or the first free practice one in in rain, um, but I really like that. Um, yeah, FP2 was quite good in, in the try. We only had with old tires, of course, no new tires. So I think we are good in pace and the performance is, I think, great. So we will look how the qualifying tomorrow will be. And I hope uh, that all is good that we are in the Q2. <laughs> did, did you like Monza so far? Yes, of course, I really like that. Um, it's uh, Bit difficult, um, yeah, over the curbs, but I really like that. <laughs> yeah, my start wasn't so good because I didn't see the lights, so it was quite difficult um, to see when the, the lights go out. Um, but yeah, the, the race was really good, uh, a lot of quite good fights. <laughs> um, I ended up at eight, I think, eight, eight, eight. eight and after that, uh, my bonnet go upstairs, and yeah, it was only. Um, two or three laps uh, before the race is finished. So I had yeah, a lucky side that I finished on P9. It was quite good with the open bonnet. <laughs> but um, yeah, I hope tomorrow that our uh, better start, of course, and a lot of fights too, and to do a top 10 finish, of course. <laughs> Um, yeah, my start was okay. Um, I had a good performance, of course, but after that, uh, in the first corner, it was a crash in front of me and I lost some position. That was a bad one, but uh, after that, I had a great performance I, and I gained some position. And after that, I um, ended the race, I think, at 11. So, nearly the top 10. Um, it was quite good and I hope uh, next race will be a little bit better in the Q2, of course, um, but I think it's... Uh, important points for us and for me and uh, yeah i'm quite good with the race but i'm really sorry for my brother but yeah that's that's racing <laughs> as you heard um, from from michelle herself 
she was happy with the races. Uh, it's more top 10 finishes and more points finishes after the second race. Uh, they were actually, um, she was actually eighth in the uh, first race because uh, another driver was penalized after the race. Uh, so it was another very strong performance for Michelle and uh, just outside the top 10, but still in the point scoring positions in, in the second race, uh, as in the TCR Europe Championship, 15 drivers score points. Uh, she is now uh, seventh in the championship, I believe. Uh, so it's it's a very good performance for her so far after the first three rounds of the championship in, in TCR Europe, her debut season, of course, after she was a, a very late addition to the grid. Um, now we can, uh, I think we can hear, uh, hear uh, Jessica for, uh, from her races. Okay, I had a really bad start, first of all, and then uh... I think, I don't know where I was in the start, but I, had, I lost many positions and then I just tried to like go forward and uh, overtook person after person and then everyone was just flying off the track, so I saw cars everywhere. So, and in the end I finished eight, so I'm actually happy about that. If I think about like the qualifying and the start, so I'm happy to finish in the top, top ten. So, yeah, I'm, I'm quite disappointed about the qualifying also because I know I had a speed but then I got overtaken twice in the same corner so he ruined my lap so yeah but I'm happy with this race so I don't even know what to say but I had a quite good start this time and I'm happy about that and after that I locked up into the first corner and after that I lost many positions and uh, yeah <laughs> Yeah, uh, as you as you heard, uh, Jessica <laughs> didn't really know what to say in the in the second race uh, of the of her weekend in uh, on Sunday. Uh, she was quite disappointed, but actually that that was recorded really after the the session. So of course, uh, any racing driver not finishing as they expected would be a little bit disappointed. But after the um, the post race disappointment. She was actually quite okay with the result. It was her uh, best uh, re result uh, in weekend-wise because um, both races she 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 did pretty well. Actually, she was seventh in the first race, just ahead of Michelle uh, after the, the disqualification of one of the drivers. Uh, so, of course, another quite solid result even for Jessica, even though um, she expected a little bit higher. Um, and uh, actually, she she was the one of the only two drivers competing in the uh, target competition team because Jessica's brother uh, Andreas um, was in Monza and uh, he actually contested the free practice session but he sit, sat out the uh, qualifying session and both the races because he, he had an injury in his uh, wrist um, he was injured in uh, in Zolder the the last round, and he he tried to to, to race, but he could ultimately uh, not make it to to the races. So Jessica uh, was uh, one of the only two drivers uh, competing in the target competition team, uh, but still finished quite uh, high in, in in the order, and I think she she will be back stronger in uh, in Barcelona. Definitely exciting stuff. I know, especially for any time a driver doesn't get the finish that they want, it's always a disappointment, but still, not just part of racing. They're all very competitive. Everyone's trying to get the best that they could. One of the drivers that probably was feeling a bit disappointed, but still came home with a top 10 finish was Haley Deegan. Haley Deegan competed in the Sioux Chef Power Packs 200 from Memphis International Raceway, another pretty short track. Has a little bit of a trial, so it's very unique, this track. Haley Deegan started third, but was unable to contend for the win. She came home seventh place, didn't lead any laps. But overall, we saw another race that was just dominated by three drivers in the Arkham Minara series. Only three different drivers led during this entire race. Now, Haley, she's still third in the points, but 63 points behind the leader. So she gained, I mean, excuse me, lost three points to the points leader. Still, there's a lot of time. The next race is going to be at Illinois Springfield. For the Illinois Truck and Equipment Allen Crow 100 from Springfield. Now, along with Haley Deegan, we also had the NASCAR Truck Series at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, the 1.5 mile racetrack that the NASCAR Cup Series used. Jennifer Jo Cobb, she started 28 by oil tank issue, resulted in her ending the race 62 laps into the race. So, a really tough break for Jennifer Jo Cobb. 
a 28th starting position at the mile and a half. A lot of things could happen. Try to get a good finish, but unfortunately, a mechanical issue ended her day early. Natalie Decker, she was unable to start the race, unfortunately. Prior to the start of the race, she was seen and medically not cleared to race by NASCAR officials. Back in December 2019, she underwent surgery to remove her gallbladder. As a result, her recovery has taken a longer time due to some complications, a lot longer than many anticipated. She has been sporadic throughout the 2020 season, where I definitely wish Natalie a speedy recovery and hope to see her racing again in the NASCAR Truck Series. The next Truck Series race is the monstrous 2.66 mile Talladega Super Speedway. For fans unfamiliar with Super Speedway, Super Speedways are essentially racetracks two miles or longer. In the Truck Series, as well as the Cup and Xfinity, it is notorious for super close racing where you have up to 20, 30 trucks all racing in one pack. One mistake and you can see a crash taking out more than 10 trucks or vehicles at one time. So it's a very treacherous track. A lot of drivers always circle this day because they know this is a good opportunity for a win. The slipstream draft is very powerful. So if you don't have a great handling vehicle, you could get up to the front. But definitely just something where a lot of drivers are going to see this as also a wild card, hoping to avoid any crash. Now, one of the big things that happened around the short track racing in the United States was history was made. We saw Katie Hedegger made history in this past weekend. She became the first female champion in the ARCA Championship Racing Series. It's part of the Championship Racing Series, CRA, Junior Late Model Division, sponsored by JEG and Victory Custom Trailers. She is only 13 years old. But definitely a big congratulations for her. She is the first female champion. Definitely at the age of 13 years old, she has a lot of potential climbing up the ranks into car racing. So definitely a lot going on throughout the state. But of course, this past weekend, one of the big races was the 24 hours of Nürburgring. Absolutely, you're right. Uh, just one week after the uh, the biggest endurance race in the world, which is the uh, Le Mans 24 Hours, uh, it was time for the biggest GT race in the world, the Nürburgring uh, 24 Hours at the mighty Nürburgring Nordschleife in Germany. Um, there was there was another all female team in the, the Nürburgring, just like uh, two all female crews were racing uh, the week before in in Le Mans. Uh, the only girls uh, race team, uh, as you can uh, you can see in the picture, uh, which are racing with a, a Volkswagen Golf uh, um, TCR car. Uh, they are racing with a all female crew, uh, which is not just a all three, three drivers uh, which are female, but also the management, uh, the mechanics, the engineers, uh, the PR team, everyone in the team is, uh, is female. And that's a very interesting concept and very interesting uh, project that the German team uh, WS Racing has, uh, has, been, has brought to uh, the VLN, which is a uh, endurance championship that is racing all season at the Nürburgring, Nordschleife. And they are also competing in the uh, the biggest race of the of the season, which is the the twenty four hour race. Uh, it's it, it was not their first uh, race there, their first twenty four hour race there. Last year they also tried to to compete in the twenty four hour race. Unfortunately, uh, they had engine issues, like in the uh, opening hours. Uh, I think in the, in the very first hour of the race, which was heartbreaking for them uh, after all the work that they put in, um, they had the, the mechanics did a tremendous job and a really amazing job because they had to um, to change the whole engine uh, last year. So after like eight hours, I think they were back in the race. Uh, of course, uh, there were a lot of laps behind, but uh, the, the crowd was all cheering for them after such an achievement that they could uh, replace an entire engine and all the, uh, all the systems, all the wiring. It was, it was crazy. Uh, we did an interview on, on our website with, uh, with their uh, team manager after, after the season, uh, which is, was really interesting to, to, to speak to. Um, this year, they were back for, uh, for more racing and hopefully for, uh, for not, not the same uh, troubles, uh, technical troubles. 
Uh, Kerry Schreiner was back in the team. Uh, she also competed with them last year. Kerry, of course, is also racing in the uh, ADAC GT Masters, which is the uh, top level GT3 uh, championship in Germany. And she will be back racing uh, this weekend, but more about that later. Um, also, Laura Kreihammer, a very interesting uh, Austrian driver, uh, is, is racing this year with uh, the GT Tire sponsored team, only, only girls. Um, and then a French racer, uh, Celia Martin, uh, joined, uh, joined them for, uh, for a very interesting racing trio at the Nürburgring. Uh, they were running very good. They were running second in class uh, until Celia was uh, was tagged and she was spun around and she hit the barriers uh, towards the end of the first day. Um, so they had to again to to fix some problems. Uh, they they were towed back to the pit lane, so she they lost a couple of laps. Um, and after that, they again the team did a fantastic job to to fix the car and to come back, and they could actually finish third in uh, in class. So a really um, impressive result from from the girls only team. Uh, but they were not the the only female drivers in the huge uh, 24 hour race uh, field. Also, Charlie Martin was there. Uh, Charlie is a really interesting driver. Um, she made history because she she is the first uh, transgender uh, to compete at the, uh, the Nürburgring in the 24-hour race and to finish the 24-hour race. Uh, she was fourth in in her class and P52 overall. Uh, again, it's 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 a huge grade, so it, that that's an impressive and an amazing result for Charlie. Um, and also Rahel Fry was racing there. Rahel uh, is, uh, has been competing in Le Mans and finishing in the top, top 10 with the Iron Lynx GTE AM Ferrari 488 uh, just one week before. So it, it was a little bit crazy from, uh, to go from, uh, uh, from Le Mans straight to the Nürburgring for two 24-hour races in, in uh, basically in a week. Uh, Rahel had a... Um, let's say, a, a difficult uh, race at the Nürburgring. Uh, she was racing with the uh, Audi R8, which is a car that she knows very well. Um, she is a Audi works driver and very experienced GT racer. Uh, she has been racing also in the Audi um, R8 uh, LMS trophy last year. That's a little bit complicated name for, for, a, ser for a series. Um, and um, she she was she actually won a couple of races. She did not compete in the uh, in the whole season, but in the races that she did, she was always P1 or P2. Uh, so it's it's a car that she knows perfectly. Uh, but they had a little bit of a mysterious race because the the car during the night actually um, the, the one thing that I did not mention before the, the race was. Um, red flagged during the night for a torrential rain. Uh, there was very, very wet race at the Nürburgring. It, it was uh, basically impossible to, to, to see. Uh, the Nürburgring is, is an incredibly difficult track, uh, to, of course, over 20 kilometers track. Uh, and you can imagine under the, the torrential rain, it, it, it was basically impossible to drive. And very dangerous and so the race direction uh, took the uh, sensible decision to stop the race and to red flag it um, during the night hours uh, so the, the the race was red flagged uh, during the early um, hours of the night and it, it uh, was again green flagged at eight in the morning on sunday uh, i was not watching because uh, I was back in I was in Monza following TCR, but my colleague Vivian followed the basically the whole race, uh, and uh, Rahel um, Rahel's team pulled out uh, during the night uh, when there was no racing. Uh, they retired the car, and basically no nobody knows the the, the reason behind the the retirement. Uh, an official communication from the team said says that. Uh, uh, for uh, on and on and off the track reasons, they they had to to stop the car. So we don't completely know the reason behind, but we are sure that uh, there was reason be behind it. 
uh, so it was a little bit of a disappointment for uh, for Rahel, which is very experienced uh, endurance racer. And of course, there, there was also uh, another female driver with uh, Claudia Hurgen. Claudia is pretty well known in Germany. Uh, she has, she uh, has been racing since the 80s, so extremely experienced. She was racing in Formula 3 championships uh, in the early 90s. I think in 93, 94, she was competing in Formula 3 championships around Europe. Uh, and as since then, she, she's basically racing in, in all German GT championships. She's also racing in the ADA GT4 championship. Uh, and she actually won her, uh, her class. She was P1 in her class. Uh, and uh, also Janine Hill, uh, which is uh, from this weekend, Janine Schofner, because it was very uh, um, late uh, wedding. So she changed her name. Uh, she was uh, P16 in the Pro-Am GT3 uh, category uh, and P17 overall, which was the highest uh, finisher in uh, among the uh, women drivers in uh, at the Nürburgring. To see all the races at the Nürburgring racing, it was very treacherous, as you mentioned. Uh, rain there it was just about blinding i couldn't believe that everyone was still racing or that and definitely big shout out to all the women that race it and congratulations to them 24 hours no rings one of the most intense races across the world now coming up to the next race weekend we got a lot of big racing coming up including formula regionals in Magello. jamie chadwick was testing there last week she'll be running this weekend formula regional championship at Magello. Definitely is going to be really exciting to see if she has the potential for a top six, maybe even a top five, looking really good during the testing period. So definitely it's going to be really exciting to see how she does in Magellan. And I understand you, Daniel, you're going to be there not only covering Jamie, but some Formula 4 action as well. Absolutely. I will be to, down to Mugello. I'm heading to Mugello later tonight uh, for uh, the uh, Formula Regional European Championship, as you said, with uh, Jamie. And uh, for the Formula 4 Italian Championship, where Hamda al uh, the 18-year-old uh, Emirati girl, uh, will be back in the Italian Formula 4 Championship after she competed in uh, one uh, round of the ADAG German Formula 4 Championship uh, last week in Hockenheim. Uh, Hamda, of course, is, is a very interesting uh, driver. Uh, her sister, Amna, was competing in the Italian Formula 4 Championship last year. Uh, she did very pretty well, actually, and towards the end of the season. Uh, she could score a P top, top 15 uh, all the races. Uh, and uh, Hamda com competed in the uh, Emirati-based Formula 4 Championship this winter and she was uh, very very consistent uh, on the podium she won two races she uh, clinched many uh, pole positions uh, and this this year she is it's the first her first uh, full season in italian formula 4 she's racing for italian iron links team which of course uh, had also um, given the car provided the car to the uh, iron dames uh, in le mans and also, actually, uh, to Michelle Gatting in, uh, in Misano this, this past weekend, where she uh, made her uh, second appearance in the uh, Ferrari Challenge after uh, the Imola round, which was the opening round for Michelle Gatting. Um, she, it was a very, very important weekend for, uh, for Michelle Gatting in, in Misano because she claimed two pole positions and a victory in, ra in race one. Uh, unfortunately, the, there was no uh, Fabian Volvend. Fabian uh, is a, a um, consistent uh, podium finisher in the Ferrari Challenge, but she could not compete in, in Misano, which was uh, the penultimate round of the European uh, season, uh, because of a technical problem in her uh, Octane 126 uh, Ferrari Challenge car. Um, she as well had the same problems in Spa Francorchamps and then she had to sit out the second race in Spa and unfortunately she could not uh, she could not compete in Misano for uh, for the um, penultimate round of the season and and so Emanuele Maria Tabacchi claimed the title 
because of course uh, Fabian was not there. Fabian is uh, was was still in title contention. She is still still second in the championship, and she is looking to uh, to go to the um, Ferrari Challenge World Finals, which will be contested in November. Uh, again in Misano, in the Italian venue of Misano. Uh, Fabian won the World Finals in 2018, so maybe she will, uh, she will again claim an important result there. But Michelle uh, did fantastic in, fantastically well in, uh, in Misano this weekend and she, with Iron Lynx, as we said. Uh, and going back to Iron Lynx, uh, uh, they are racing also in the Italian Formula 4 Championship with Hamda al uh, the Italian Formula 4 and the Euro Formula 3 uh, Regional European Championship are often racing together on the same uh, weekend. And so I'll be there uh, to see the races in, uh, in Mugello starting from tomorrow. Uh, today, Jamie had the testing in, uh, in Mugello. And also last week, uh, she, she, she had tested there. And from what I know, uh, she has been doing pretty well. So I think uh, we can be hopeful for a uh, important result from, from her. And also another top 10, hopefully, for, uh, for Amda, as uh, she, she claimed her first top 10 two weeks ago in the Italian Formula 4, three weeks ago, actually, in the Italian Formula 4 Championship and in the Red Bull Ring, where my colleague Vivian was, uh, was there. Uh, and uh, a top 10 again in, uh, in Hockenheim. So, so she's really starting to, um, to, to climb towards the, the top of the standings. Uh, we, we remind that uh, both the German Formula 4 and the Italian Formula 4 are the uh, most important Formula 4 championship I think the most competitive worldwide. Uh, there are huge grades of uh, over 30 cars, and the, all the, the the best drivers from uh, from around Europe are competing competing there. So Hamda is really someone to watch. And in the Emirati, uh, in in the UAE, uh, we know that uh, sponsors are starting to get interest in in Hamda, uh, as well as her sister. Uh, Hamda won the the trophy Ch Formula 4 championship uh, in uh, in Abu Dhabi uh, together with the Formula 1 uh, Abu Dhabi Grand Prix last year in November December actually sorry uh, so um, and, and she was set to um, to a Formula 3 st to step up to Formula 3 this year actually she had to sit out for a full season from what we know, uh, but hopefully we, she will be also back because the uh, Alcubaisi sisters are really interesting uh, drivers, not only in, in among the female uh, driver movement, but also uh, as as a as, as overall. Uh, and I think uh, um, they are also very important for the uh, Middle Eastern. Uh, movements and also of course to inspire young women in uh, in the Mirati. Definitely very inspiring. Really great story about Honda and all of them racing. Now one of course the big things Indianapolis Motor Speedway this weekend is busy. GT4 America is going on and last week's guest Aaron Vogel is racing there. This is the season finale for the GT4 America series. Aaron's there racing I know she's already been off to a pretty good start. Definitely gonna be really interesting race. Entering the eight hour race of Intercontinental GT Challenge. We also have Samantha Tan at Indianapolis. She is racing there as well. Definitely Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Of course, a lot of talk about Indianapolis Motor Speedway with some of the changes NASCAR is facing. Well, of course, for the GT, they are running the same road course that the IndyCars use for this upcoming weekend, as well as NASCAR next year. So definitely a win at Indianapolis, especially auto racing is a huge deal. So, you know, Aaron, Samantha, they are both trying to get that win. Because to say you want an Indianapolis Motor Speedway, one of the meccas of auto racing, it's always a really exciting, thrill victory. And to get it at Indianapolis is going to be really big. And I understand we still got some more racing coming, including Sylvester and Rahel Frey doing some more racing this upcoming weekend. Absolutely, they will be back as we mentioned before in the uh, ADAC GT Masters, which is uh, one of the most important GT3 championships around Europe. Uh, they will be like, they uh, will be like racing in uh, Saxon Ring, uh, which is of course uh, famous for uh, the uh, MotoGP uh, race in Germany, but also of course uh, hosts uh, um, national championships. 
uh, Simona Di Silvestro uh, was from this year a uh, Porsche uh, works driver uh, will be there. She uh, in, in in the opening round of the championships in the ADAC uh, GT Masters, she was always very close to a podium finish. She could not quite get uh, to the podium uh, together with uh, her teammate and co-driver uh, Klaus Bachler, uh, who is a very experienced uh, Austrian driver. I think this, uh, this weekend uh, they will be again fighting for uh, podium positions and uh, also Rahel Frey, uh, as we as we said before about her couple of last, uh, she had a, a very uh, busy month, um, Rahel, uh, she will be back in uh, in the Audi uh, for uh, the GT Masters and also Kerry Schreiner, uh, who is also racing in, in an Audi R8, um, will be there with uh, her co-driver, Dennis Marshall. They uh, were on pole position last, uh, last time out at Hockenheim, Let's see what they can do uh, this time out in uh, Saxon Ring. And of course, there is also an, uh, the uh, TCR Scandinavia uh, STCC Championship uh, back uh, racing this weekend. They are racing in Mantorp in Sweden. Uh, this year, uh, of course, Scandinavia cannot go, cannot extend their calendars into uh, the uh, colder months like some of the ch championship will be doing. Uh, so it was very short uh, calendar for uh, for them. Uh, it's their uh, third round of the season out of four uh, races. And uh, Mikaela Olen Kotulinski is racing there uh, in uh, Cupra. Um, Michaela was really competitive last year in the uh, very important PWR t uh, team, um, in, which is uh, one of the most important uh, um, t touring car teams in, in Scandinavia. They, they are also racing in the uh, WTCR in the World Touring Car Championship. Uh, Michaela this year has um, not quite had the same season that she hoped for like last year uh, but again she's always there she's always uh, competitive we you, we can always uh, expect the good results from her uh, she actually topped the um, practice sessions the uh, the test sessions that they they are they had two weeks ago i think uh, so let's let's hope for another important result for Michaela as well this weekend in Mantorp. yeah it's one of the things I know in the northern countries, especially like when I was in Alaska, winter comes way too quick, so the racing season just a little bit too short. What's not short is definitely the Euro NASCAR season. That is still going, and we do have them racing at Zolder this week. Julia Landauer, she is coming to race at the Zolder track for Euro NASCAR, potentially a contender. She's definitely somebody to watch when it comes to Euro NASCAR. Of course, Euro NASCAR is organized by the folks over at NASCAR, but this is definitely the European brand of racing. And also we're going to see Italian driver Ariana Casoli racing. So that's going to be really exciting as well. Seeing her, this is a growing series in Europe. We also have former driver, Formula One driver, Jack Villeneuve competing there. So definitely when it comes to stock car racing, especially the kind of stock car racing we see in the United States, Euro NASCAR, we still have the stock cars. You still see really close racing and with the fenders quite often you see some beating and banging and definitely always makes it really exciting and it's definitely really exciting to see some of the women racing there because it is known as here in the united states a contact sport and we still have some more including the europa cup coming up this weekend absolutely as you said the alpine europa cup will be back uh, in uh, in france uh, at the uh, Paul Ricard uh, circuit, which is the home of the French Formula One uh, race. Uh, racing in the uh, Alpine One Make series are Gojar Dest, the Polish uh, driver that we, we spoke about her in the previous uh, episodes of Grid Girls. Uh, Goja uh, is always a very interesting driver to see. She's racing basically every, every weekend, uh, either in the... Uh, Polish Touring Car Championship or in the Alpine Europa Cup and she's also making some uh, uh, guest appearances in, in other championships. She's also quite uh, starting to become um, an, a more um, experienced sim racer. Uh, of course, uh, she's also racing in Porsche uh, races in, in uh, sim racing. And also together with, uh, alongside Gosha, there will be the young uh, female racer Lilou Wadu. 
uh, we spoke about uh, Lilou also in the previous weeks. Uh, um, she has been really impressive. Lilou has been really impressive the, the couple of rounds in the uh, last couple of rounds in um, Nogaro and in uh, Manikur. Um, so let's see how, how that goes at the uh, important Paul Ricard track. Very important track, Paul Ricard. A lot of racing goes on right there from Formula One all the way down to the Europa Cup. Definitely very important. That's going to do for today's program. Definitely encourage everyone to visit Racers, the girls behind the helmet. You can find their link in the video description as well as their other social media. And of course, subscribe to the Grid Network on YouTube. Don't miss any one of our programs. We also now have an Instagram account at Grid Network. You can also find Racers there as well. Definitely stay in touch and we definitely love to hear from you. For Daniel at Racers, the girls behind the helmet, I'm Joe from the Grid Network. Thank you for watching today. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you next week.